Hi, and welcome to the Sussex Wesleyan Church online worship experience. I'm Pastor Willie Vaughn, and as always, I want to thank you for taking time out of your weekend to join with me as we open up God's Word together. I hope that in our time together as we study the words of Jesus Christ, that you are just encouraged in your faith, lifted up and built up and equipped to live a life of peace and of joy, the kind of life that God wants you to have through Christ Jesus. Of course, the words that I say are just words, unless they're empowered by the Holy Spirit to actually touch lives. So with that in mind, would you join with me as we pray to God to use this message? God, we just thank you. We thank you for who you are, the God of all creation. We thank you for your word, how it is so powerful. And we thank you for your spirit that is here with us. The same spirit that is here with me in this moment is with each and every person watching and listening. And I ask, Lord, that it would truly be your words that are heard, that they would sink into hearts and minds and that they would change and transform attitudes and mindsets in our time together. And we ask, Lord, that you would be glorified, that you would accomplish what you desire to accomplish in each of our hearts and our souls in this time. We thank you for this privilege that we have to come to you and we dedicate this time to you for your will. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to start off with a question. In the world in which we live and all the challenges, are you rested or are you stressed? No, that's probably not even a word, but you get my point. Are you rested or are you stressed? And in all that we have going on in life, we have to ask ourselves, what is our mindset? Where are, what are we feeling? What are we experiencing? And Jesus wants you to experience an abundant life. I love John 10.10. 10. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life to the fullest. He wants you to experience a life of joy and of peace. So we're in the middle of a, of a sermon series, a message series called the Ten Commandments of the New Covenant. The Ten Commandments that Jesus gives us. We all know about the Ten Commandments written on stone that were given to Moses. But when Jesus came and he started his ministry, he had commandments as well. And we're studying that. We're studying Matthew chapter 5 through 7, the Sermon on the Mount. And so I'd like you to read along with me as we look at the words of Jesus, as we, li as we listen to the words of Jesus found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. And Jesus says, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying Add a single hour to your life. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the, the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans, the unbelievers, run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Jesus says, do not worry. You know, we have those, those memes and those shirts you can buy, you know, keep calm and do this. And, and the fourth commandment that we're going to talk about today is Jesus' commandment to keep calm and trust Jesus. Stay calm and trust Jesus. You see, I, what I love about the New Testament the gospel of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God that Jesus came and preached and talked about and how we're to live in this new idea, this new culture, this mindset was where the Old Testament, the Old Commandments were a lot of lists of things to don't do this and don't do that. Jesus gives us commandments and this is what I want you to do, to pursue. Now, of course, in this understanding, Jesus 
Many people look at Jesus and say, oh, he was a good teacher, he was a good person, he was a, a nice guy, and he, and he taught some good lessons on how to live and, you know, a better way to be, and he was all about love, and, and they take Jesus' words and his life and his teaching and the fact that he gave his life and died, allowed himself to be crucified, to be murdered and killed for us. And they just kind of make it all this wishy-washy Sunday school lesson. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of good advice. And it's good to read the Bible and listen to the words of Jesus. But Jesus comes and he says he gives us commands. He says, do not worry. Do this. Don't do that. And I think the, what we get the most out of it is when we take seriously Jesus' words. Not as just good advice from a nice guy and a good teacher, but as commands of God, commands of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Again, Jesus wants us to live a great life. And he says, this is what I'm telling you to do. Now, do we take it seriously? Or do we just say, yeah, it's a, it's a good idea? How much we get out of what Jesus tells us and what Jesus wants us to experience comes along with the question we have to answer. Are these commands or just advice? And Jesus gives this command, stay calm, keep calm, do not worry. And over and over he says, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry. Trust me, trust me. It's an understanding that this is a command, a command we need to listen to. So often we can say, oh, commands are about this ritual or that ritual or go to church or give the money. But Jesus says this is a, a foundational command. When Moses led the people out of Egypt in the Old Testament, and you know the story, and we're kind of correlating in the New Testament, but he led the people out of Egypt, <clears throat> not directly into the promised land, but into the wilderness, so that God could give them a new culture and a new set of laws and rules and order. The New Testament says our God is not a God of chaos and anarchy, but a God of law and order. And so God took the Israelite people, the nation of Israel, out of Egypt. And he says, now I need to teach you and show you what I want you to be like. I need to give you a new culture and a new structure. Something totally different than the way you lived in Egypt. And something totally different than any other country in the world at that time. This is how I want you to live in order to reveal and show the world what God is like, what heaven is like. And Jesus does the same thing for the church in the New Testament. He says, I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to give you grace. And I'm going to forgive you. And I'm going to give you freedom. And then I'm going to show you a new culture. And a new law. And a new way to live. That's totally different than the world around you. If you want to be a part of my church, my kingdom. Jesus constantly talked about the kingdom of God. You need to think differently. You need to act differently and you need to live by a certain standard, an ethos, a law, a command. And so we need to take seriously these commands. The command to keep calm. It's foundational for Christian life to take seriously this command. Both John the Baptist and Jesus in the New Testament when it starts out come preaching this concept, repent. For the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is near, is at hand. And that word repent means in, in the Greek and the way it was written and what they were saying is you need to change the way you think, to change your attitude. And that's why these commands and this culture is so important and foundational. To live a Christian life, you need to change the way you think and live differently than the world around you. That's what God is calling us to in these commands. Do you take it as a command or as just advice? Do you take it seriously or do you ignore it? Because that's foundational on how this will play out in our lives. Jesus gives us his command to stay calm, to not worry, to rest and relax in him. And in order to play that out, we need to view it in the different aspects as we go through it. We need to seek it. We need to feel it. And we need to speak it. You ever see those, those monkey things, uh, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil? Kind of get that picture in my mind as I was thinking about this. Because if we don't seek it, we don't look for it, we're not going to experience it and be able to do it. And if we don't feel it, it's not going to make any difference in our lives. And if we don't speak it, 
we're not going to be able to share it. God wants us to seek it, to feel it, and to speak it. Seek the peace of God, feel the peace of God, and speak the peace of God. It's that understanding that we have. We need to seek it. And we start off by seeking it. Matthew 6, in the passage we just read, Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Don't worry about all the details of life. Seek first the kingdom of God. And sometimes we need to use scripture to interpret scripture. Use the Bible to interpret the Bible. Because I don't know if you're like me, sometimes you can read a verse in the Bible and it sounds really good, but then you got to ask the question, what does it mean? I mean, what does it mean to seek first the kingdom of God? How do you look for the kingdom of God? Well, in Romans 14, 17, it says, the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. So if the kingdom of God is righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit, and we're supposed to seek that first, we should be seeking peace. We should be seeking righteousness. We should be seeking joy, looking for it, searching for it, trying to find it. And Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the peace. In Psalm 34, it says, seek peace and pursue it. In order to live this life of not worrying, you've got to really be intentional about following this as a command. You need to be disciplined. Jesus' first, first followers were called disciples. They were disciplined. And so following these commands is a discipline. It's something we need to take seriously. Something we need to try to do. We need to pursue. We need to practice. We need to try to achieve it. We need to cooperate with God. It's not just something, okay, I'll give it to you, and you don't have to do anything. The Christian life is something that we live out and we act out. And one of the things we're commanded to do is to seek peace and pursue it. To seek first the kingdom of God. Before we do anything else, to look for and how to apply it to our lives. We need to seek it out. We need to intentionally look for it. If we want to live the Christian life, this is what we've got to do. And why is that so important? Because no matter where you've been in life, everything leading up to coming into a relationship with Jesus was preparing you for something. You went through life. You had difficulties. You had struggles. You had people stab you in the back and people make fun of you. And you've been hurt and you've been abandoned and you've been lied to and lied about. And people have really pushed you down and pushed you around and all of that has given you an experience and a, this mindset that this is a dog eat dog world and and everything I got to fight for everything that I have and then Jesus when he comes into your life and he says I want you to be a part of this new kingdom you got to relearn everything because we've spent so much time learning how to guard ourselves learning how to fight everything learning how to you know go for the drama everything's drama and jesus says in my new kingdom in this new culture that i want you to be a part of you need to seek the kingdom of god you need to seek peace and pursue it you need to avoid the drama and find that inner peace you need to seek it it's not just going to fall into your lap you're going to go through life and you're going to face challenges even after you enter into a relationship with Jesus. And you're going to have people act in a certain way. And Jesus says, you want to be a part of the kingdom, you have to learn to act like me. You need to seek first my kingdom. You need to seek first my way of living. You need to be intentional about trying to do it, to seek it out. And so we need to seek. We need to look for it. We need to look for the peace of God. There are still people who call themselves Christians and yet love the drama. They love to get into fights and conflicts and arguments and debates. And Jesus says, that's not the way to live in the kingdom of God. Seek first my kingdom. Seek first my peace. Don't worry. Don't get caught up in the drama. Not that you have to run from every fight, but in your mindset, in the inner person, in your soul, is seeking peace. God desires you to seek it. But then when you seek it, you have to experience it. Jesus wants us to feel peace. 
In Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, it talks a lot about entering into the rest of God. Hebrews 4.1 says, Therefore, since the promise of entering His rest, the rest and relaxation of Jesus Christ, still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. And verse 11 says, Let us therefore make every effort to enter into that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. That's what we've got to do. We've got to make every effort to enter into that rest. We need to seek His rest, seek His peace. But then when we do that, we need to give ourselves time to feel it, to really feel it. Again, it's understanding we're preparing for an eternal kingdom. If you were going on a trip to France, getting ready to travel, You'd want to learn a little bit of the language before you got there, at least the basics, you know. Where is the bathroom? Can I get a cup of coffee? How do you find? In the same way, when we're Christians, we're preparing to live in the eternal kingdom. We're preparing to learn. And part of that is to experience and feel what this peace is like. To spend time in the peace of God. That's why... Gathering in church is so important. Spending time in worship is so important. Spending time in prayer is so important. Setting aside time to experience the peace of God. Because if you seek it and you find it, and then you just sit it there on the shelf, it doesn't really benefit you. And Jesus wants us to feel it, to experience it. There's a time, and usually we gather, and the church tradition is on a Sunday morning to come and gather in a building and to sing praises and worship to God. And to pray with one another and for one another. And to just spend time studying his word. Even in the crazy world in which we live, we can still set aside that time. Whether we come and gather in a building which has its advantages. Or even if that's not possible at certain times. To set aside a time that this is the time I'm going to be alone with God. Or I'm going to be gathered with other people on social media or on the internet. And just gather in worship to experience and feel his peace. We love to call our time together a worship experience because that's what it really needs to be, a time to experience God's peace, to experience that calm, to experience that rest and relaxation. See, this is the, the fourth commandment of the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the fourth commandment was remember the Sabbath, the Sabbath rest and keep it holy, to set aside a day of just focusing on God and resting in Him and not working. I think we've lost a bit of that, but again, Jesus enhances that in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, in His New Kingdom, where it's not just so much a day, but it's a lifestyle. It's not just saying, okay, Saturday I don't work, or Sunday I don't work. But he says, I want this to be your life, to experience it. In John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, if you abide in me, you will bear much fruit. We're called to bear fruit for the kingdom of God, and that is, comes about when we abide in him, when we rest in him, when we live in that peace. When we live in that state of continual relaxation and resting and trusting in God. When I first came to Jesus in my early 20s, that was a kind of an in and out process. It took time of practicing because there'd be days where, oh yeah, I can feel it today. God, I experienced your peace. And then the next day someone would say something I didn't like and I got all fired up and all stressed out and all worried and so it's a practice that we need to do. We need to spend the time and give ourselves time to experience it. That's why gathering is so important. It's taking that time. I'm going to sit and rest in it. And when we experience it, then we have that hope that builds up in us. You know, we talk about heaven as someplace far away, but Jesus says, I want you to experience a little bit of heaven right now. I want you to feel a little bit of that peace right now. God says in those certain moments, you take that time to let yourself experience it. This is kind of what heaven's going to be like. It's a little glimpse into eternity. I want you to experience a little glimpse of the peace that's going to be surrounding you and just permeating throughout in heaven forever when you're with me face to face. I want you to experience just a little bit, just a moment, a glimpse of that joy. So you said, this is what I'm hoping for. This is what I'm waiting for. This is what I'm headed for. 
We need to feel it. Feel it now to enter into his rest, to abide in his rest, to make time to experience his rest. That's why it is important to take a day once in a while. God says, take one day a week and just focus on me. Make it holy. It's time to, it's good to go on a spiritual retreat, maybe take three or four days once or twice a year and just get away and say, you know what? All the rest of the world can fade away. The most important thing is for me to experience the kingdom of God. Jesus says, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and experience it. Give yourself time to experience it. Spending time in worshiping God. It says, we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and we enter into his courts with praise. We enter in, in Psalm 100, verse 4. We go into a place, a destination, where resting and relaxing in God is a destination that we want our souls to live in, to feel and experience. It's not just something we talk about, but something we really need to experience in our hearts and our lives. Not something we, we know in our head, we say with our mouth, but never enjoy in our life. We need to really experience it. We need to seek it and we need to feel it. Isaiah 40, 31 says, Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Those that spend time just resting in God and trusting in God and looking to God instead of looking at everything else in the, in the world going on will renew their strength that will be built up. And those that are stressed out all the time, always staring at their problems, always trying to fix everything, and I'm getting high blood pressure and heart attacks and bad habits to try to escape it. But God wants us to feel it, seek it and to feel it. And then we are given the ability to speak it. We need to seek it, we need to feel it, and then we need to speak it. In Luke 6, 45, Jesus says, The good person, the good man, out of the good stored up in his heart, brings forth good things. Good, good, good. But the evil person, from the evil stored up in his heart, brings forth evil things. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. God, I just love how he's given me these messages because it, there's a progression in this. You see, you need to diligently seek God's peace. And then you need to let yourself experience God's peace and then you're abled, enabled to speak God's peace. Sometimes we can get, the, get it out of order and it never works. And we try to speak it before we feel it. And people see right through it. Jesus was finishing up a time of ministry and he went in a boat with some of his disciples. And in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41, this is what it says. That day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side, leaving the crowd behind. They took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And a furious storm came up and the waves broke over the boat so it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke, to, woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? And he got up and rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Peace, and be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is a beautiful picture of what Jesus wants us to do, to live like him. In the midst of the storm, with all the chaos going around and all everything around him, Jesus was in a place of peace. He was in a place of rest. He was able to sleep through the biggest storms. Everybody else was flipping out. Everyone around him was like flipping out. Have you ever been in that situation where everybody around you is just freaking out? But Jesus was in a place of peace. And because of that, he was able to speak, peace, be still. And all of a sudden, everything else had to calm down. 
It was out of the abundance of what was stored up in his heart that he was able to speak peace to the situation. Maybe you're in a situation with family members and there's a lot of conflict and there's a lot of tension or maybe it's a place at work and there's a, a storm going on and people are aggravated. Maybe the people around you, friends and family or your neighborhood and, and the discussions just get more and more aggressive. And Jesus says, if you want to be part of my kingdom, if you seek that peace, and if you feel that peace, you'll be able to speak that peace. To say to the situation, peace, be still. And again, if the order of this is so important. Have you ever seen someone who didn't have peace try to say something like that? Try to say, calm down. It's like, you know, men who are married. One of the best ways to get your wife to calm down is to tell her, hey, you're, you're getting too stressed out. Calm down. Relax. You know, no one ever relaxed because someone told them to relax. <laughs> but when you try to speak that peace that you don't have, it comes out more like this. Everybody needs to calm down. All right, calm down, everybody. Peace, just relax. Just quiet down. And you're trying to say something that you don't have, but when you have that peace and you've experienced it and everything else is going on crazy around you and you can just calmly say, peace, be still. I like that Kenny Chesney song. Everything's going to be all right, all right. You know, that's a place coming from a place of peace and speaking peace. To the situation saying it's gonna be okay trust God rest in him relax in Jesus Christ that's the commandment to seek it to feel it and to speak it and we have that ability to speak the Word of God you see Jesus came and he preached the kingdom of God the gospel of God the good news the news of Jesus Christ is good news. And we need to speak it after we've experienced it. Jesus said, whatever I've whispered to you in the quiet place, in our prayer time, go and shout from the mountaintops, shout from the rooftops, peace. A peace that surpasses understanding, as it says in Philippians. A peace in the midst of turmoil. There's peace in God. There's peace with God because of Jesus Christ. You see, it's that setting apart the Christian life. About, it's about seeking God's kingdom, seeking His peace, experiencing His peace, and then speaking it. In 1 Peter 3.15, one of my favorite scriptures, it says, Set apart Christ in your heart as Lord. And always be prepared to give an answer when people ask you of the hope that you have within you. You see, always be ready to give an answer when people ask you, why are you so calm? Why are you at such peace? Why are you worried? Why aren't you worried? I was in a situation early on in my faith when I was working out my faith and stumbling through it and making a lot of mistakes. And the people around me were getting all worried and upset. No, you can't do that. You got to do this. You need to stop doing that. Why are you doing this? And all this. And there was this man in church and he just had a peace. He said, listen, you're going through some stuff. It's not the end of the world. He was able to speak into my life that I was going to be able to get through it. That my failures and my mistakes and my shortcomings and my struggles with my own personal sins wasn't going to be the end of me because there's a peace. And that peace that gives strength. The situation you're facing today in your life, I want you to know that Jesus gives a peace for that. That it's not going to destroy you. That God can rescue you and save you. He can walk with you through it and He can bring you out to the other side. That it may seem like it's the end, it's over, but if you're going to walk by Jesus' side, you can experience His peace. That's what the Christian life is about. It's about experiencing His peace. You don't need to worry. Which of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life, Jesus said. 
Which of you by worrying can turn one hair on your head, white or black? I always love the, the picture. Worry is kind of like sitting in a rocking chair. You put a lot of effort in, but you don't ever get anywhere. The commandment of the new covenant, the commandment Jesus gives, is to rest in him, to rest and relax in me. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. Come to me, all of you who are stressed out and burdened and, and just feeling so much pressure, and I'll give you rest for your souls. And we're called to follow this very important commandment in order to live out the Christian life. But it's an understanding, too, that it's not just a command. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ isn't just a list of rules. But in Philippians, it tells us, he gives us both the ability and a desire to live a life that pleases him. You see, as much as it is a command, that it is something we should take seriously and cooperate with, we know that Jesus says in John 14, 27, He says, Peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give. Therefore, I don't worry. Trust in me. Obey my commands. It all comes back to that command, but it's also a gift. You see, coming to Jesus Christ... He'll give you that ability to rest in Him. And He'll give you that ability to stop worrying. You can't do it on your own. It's about knowing Him, knowing the God of all peace, knowing the God who loved you enough to die for you, so He'll give you everything that you need to live a life for the calling that He has for you, to live a life in His kingdom, a kingdom of peace and of joy. Do you know Him? Every journey, every process starts with a single step. And it's the same way with living out this kingdom. It starts with taking that step and saying, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord. I want you to give me the ability to have this peace. And then help me to live it out. Jesus wants to give you his peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding as a free gift. He says, yeah, I know you've made mistakes. I know you've... you've made some mess ups and some screw ups in your life and you think it's over but I'm going to restore you I'm going to redeem you I'm going to give you a peace I'm going to give you a new life and a new beginning and a new destiny and a new hope and a new future and a new vision for life are you willing to cooperate with me to follow these commands to live out the wonderful life I have for you it's just foundational, the commands that Jesus gives. Would you pray with me? God, we live in such a time where we've never so much needed to hear this word that you desire for us to, not desire, you command us to live a life of peace. But you don't just command us to do something and not give us the ability. We thank you. We ask that you help us to seek out your peace in every area of our lives. That you allow, give us the, the desire and the ability to carve out times that we might enter into your rest. That we might be built up and rejuvenated and replenished by your peace. As we spend time with you in prayer and in worship and in fellowship in different ways. And we ask, Lord, that you also inspire us as we experience it to speak peace, to not be drawn in to the debates and the arguments and the drama, but in each and every situation by your spirit to rise above it and speak that peace. I pray that this message would sink into my heart and the heart of everyone listening. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining with me. And if you haven't yet made that decision to enter into this new life, this kingdom life, this new covenant with Jesus, stick around just a minute longer and I'll share with you how to make Jesus the Lord of your life and experience this peace for yourself. God bless you. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do I. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi, it's me, Pastor Willie Vaughn again. And I wanted to thank you for watching this message today. 
I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you were blessed and encouraged and challenged in your faith. The Christian faith is founded upon receiving forgiveness from our sins, which was paid for by Jesus Christ and his blood on the cross, and having a relationship with God through the risen Lord Jesus. This is known as the free gift of salvation. And to receive this free gift, all that is required is to confess your sins to God in prayer, to turn from them and to believe in your heart that Jesus is God. He really did die on the cross for your sins and was raised again. And to confess that out loud and live that out in conviction through faith. If the Holy Spirit has stirred your heart today and you realize that you do not have a relationship with God like this, but you want one, it would be my pleasure to lead you in prayer for that right now. Just repeat these words after me. God, I realize that I was created by you and made to honor you. I confess right now that I have not lived that way. I've been living for myself. But I want to change and live for you. Jesus, I believe in my heart that you are God. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you were buried and raised again on the third day. I accept and receive the forgiveness you offer. I invite your spirit into my heart and I commit to following you and your ways. Come speak to me now. I make you my Lord, my God, my King, and my Savior. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is not a magic formula, but a conversation with God, the God who knows your heart. And if you prayed that with a sincere heart, the Bible says you have been born from above. But the journey is not finished. It has just begun. The Bible says that he who endures to the end will be saved. There will be many challenges. So we encourage you to find a good church, a family of believers who will encourage you in the Christian life and the Christian walk. We encourage you to pray regularly and to begin to read and study the Bible and to do your best to cooperate with the Holy Spirit as He inspires you and empowers you to live out your faith. We would love to continue to walk with you in faith and to pray for you and with you as well as pass on some resources to you. So if you just prayed that prayer, we invite you to text the word SAVED, that's S-A-V-E-D, to 973-755-1637. That's 973-755-1637. Just fill out a short questionnaire and we will get in touch with you. May God bless you abundantly in Christ Jesus. And I pray, proclaim this blessing over you according to 3 John. 1 verse 2, which says, Dear friend, I pray that you may succeed in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. God bless.